Hello, how are you? Another little video again. Great little case, as always. They're always great cases. Um, this case, of course, is um, multifactorial in its uh, in its problem solving, and and obviously the the uh, the headline here is finding a middle mesial canal. But this was not the only challenge we found um, within this tooth, and I think it's, this demonstrates. Um, really, really nice problem solving when you're doing a root canal and you're finding things aren't going quite in the direction that you want it to be. So, like I say, we've got middle mesial canal finding one of those. Unusually, with these types of uh, with, with these types of teeth, uh, the the canals are really, really wide. And I'm gonna sort of show you a, a kind of bit of a, of a way of managing these canals appropriately. And of course, um, when you've got wide open canals obturating and and just taking the comfort radiograph can be a challenge and, and something occurred um, well an extrusion occurred in this uh, in this case and we uh, and, and I'll show you how to manage these cases so let's have a look at the radiograph here this is of a lower six and clearly there's uh, a huge bit of decay there distally and Unusually, like I say, for these cases, the canal space and the pulp chamber is humongous, okay? So straight away, I'm thinking to myself, um, I'm, I'm not worried about negotiation in this case, although sometimes when we look at distal canals, they've got huge, huge wide open uh, spaces, but when they get to the apical uh, third, they can split and then that can be a, a challenge as well. What I'm also concerned about is obturation. I'm worried about the apex being too wide. And then when I obviously push my GP point to length with the sealer, it's gonna push through the uh, through the apex. So that straight away, we look at this X-ray and that is exactly what I'm thinking. So I am not entirely sure if I have um, already accessed this tooth. I, I, well, it's already been accessed, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the referring dentist who'd already accessed this, only because that this tooth has got a cottonwood pledge in it, and I think it's got leather mix as well. So I um, routinely like to use PTFE over cottonwool, and, and this is for two main reasons, okay. Number one, practical reasons. Um, the, uh, the, the cottonwool pledge, like you can see here, just gets caught on the drill and it's really really annoying and what you don't want to do is you don't want to get the uh, the, the cotton wool around the drill and just chuck the drill away you obviously want to keep that drill because they're expensive so it's difficult to try and get that cotton wool off if it gets caught another issue with cotton wool is it's thought that the fibers themselves if they get into the root canal space they're difficult to remove and they harbor bacteria so there's a, a possible suggestion that if you have these cotton wool fibers that they are uh, gonna result in failure or a higher risk of failure i don't know the evidence on that and if everybody and if anybody in the comment section knows of any papers i'd love for you to link in the comment section below so now what we're doing here is we're using an ultrasonic tip, high energy, and we're just pulling out all of that um, leather mix. And I'm just having a very, very, very little look at what we've got. Because it's always a nice little surprise to remove the filling and see, can we see uh, canal orifices? Because if we can't, it's a bit of a pain. Um, but if we can, fantastic. We know we're on our, on our way with this. And the first thing I wanna do here is just fill the access cavity full to the brim with sodium hypochlorite. I've spoken about this technique before. This is the bathtub technique, I think. And I just like to get the sodium hypochlorite in there and just to start working its magic, getting dissolving all the organic tissue. And straight away, I'm just gonna try and gain the working length in the mesiobuccal canal. Why have I chosen the mesobuccal canal first? I don't know. I just felt like it at the time and I'm using these uh, D finders here just to um, excise these, uh, these, uh, this, this file down to the working length. And straight away I've found the, uh, the zero reading. So, you know, when, when, when you find the zero reading, it's just, it's just nice, isn't it? You know, you can spend 45 minutes just getting down the, the canal. And the fact that I have got down this canal so quickly, I'm going to go straight for a 35. So we're talking about, um, 
uh, the, the canal being really, really nice and wide, I'm gonna go straight for the 35, which is highly, highly unusual. Using such a thick file at such a large taper can risk ledging the tooth, but I am confident here that the 35 can get down quite nice and easy. Lots of irrigation. And now I'm gonna attempt to get down the mesolingual canal. Again, using these D finders. And at the moment, the apex locator, you'll listen, um, is, is showing like a bit of an erroneous reading, meaning it's all over the place. And basically, if that's the case with your apex locator, it's always good to adjust the moisture within the canal space. So this could be there's too much um, irrigants or not enough irrigants. Sometimes when the uh, the marginal seal on these temporary fillings is, is slightly not uh, the best. If you've got your irrigant full to the brim in the canal, this can uh, sort of short out the apex locator reading. So I've just removed some of the, uh, the, 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 the irrigant in the canal space there, sorry, in the bulb space, but left irrigants in the canal space because my apex locator res, uh, relies on moisture for it to work correctly. And when I'm doing the apex locator reading, I am pushing the file through the apex, gently of course, and then I'm gonna bring it back. And I think that gives me the best measurement. And you can see here that it's 20 millimeters. And again, just picking up the 35, I'm confident this is gonna go to length. It's minus 0.5 of the zero reading because we need to account for the, um, the apical constriction and it's the same protocol. Lots of irrigants. If I'm getting a little bit of resistance, I'm gonna pull out and then all nice and easy. So we're, we're really motoring along here and this is what you wanna, um, this is what you wanna uh, achieve with your root canals. I have got two hours, but I'm trying to do it as efficiently as possible, just in case we come up with, um, you know, some sort of problem or an extra canal. In this case we do. So distal canal's done, same protocol. And this is, Possibly something you only trying to you're trying to see when you're um, when you've got a uh, an operating microscope. There's a possibility here of a middle mesial canal. Now this could be just some like kind of fissure within the uh, pul pulpal floor, and it could just go straight into one of the other canals. Or in this case, I used a D find, and I feel like it was sort of cutting its own path. It was it wasn't um, obviously going into another canal space. So we're gonna use this uh, Hyflex 15 glide path file here just to shape it out. Not going too far, of course, because you don't want to ledge or fracture the file. And then we're just gonna aspirate the irrigants and just kind of assess um, the middle mesial canal here. Now, straight away in my mind, I feel like every single middle mesial canal I've ever found, it's always joined onto another canal. So given that knowledge straight away, what I wanna do is I want to confirm this somehow. And I suspect that the join is in the mesolingual canal. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a GP point. And this kind of uh, works out great because we can check tug back in the middle mesial canal if it's the right length. In this case, it's 19.5. And um, I'm gonna fit this to length. And then what I'm gonna do is I then I'm gonna take a hand file and I'm gonna move the hand file into the middle mesial canal and try and feel for that kind of spongy feeling, maybe if the mesial canal is, uh, middle mesial canal is joining on to uh, the mesial angle because it's touching the GP point. So we're gonna, this is a terrible uh, video by the way, you can't really see what I'm doing there, but I've, um, gonna remove the GP point now and just inspect the end. And as you can see here, you can see there's a mark on the GP point. So we know in the mesolingual canal, the middle mesial joins at about 15 millimeters. And that is significant because now we know we don't need to get a zero reading on the apex locator and we can shape up to this 15 millimeter mark with our size. 35 and this just cuts out all sorts of heartache and risk we know that we don't need to really really push these files to the zero reading because we know that the mini mesial joins in the mesial angle and another really good tip if you have two joining canals is if you've shaped one canal it's always great to finally shape 
the the main canal as we say because sometimes when you shake one canal you can get sort of um debris that blocks that canal so here we go looks really 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 nice and now we're going to go for the cone fit radiograph and this is the first cone fit radiograph we're going to put all our cones to 0.5 and we can see here that the middle mesial is um, is, is, is too far out and this is essentially because I have not apically gauged the tooth correctly enough so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this 35 we know it's about a millimeter out um, where we can see that that's the right diameter we're going to put it in the 40 so this is going to cut this GP point at 40 and we can see when we push it through at the 40 it's about a millimeter um, that we're going to cut away so I suppose this is like a kind of a roundabout way of um, apically gauging uh, the tooth. So now when I fit this um, adjusted cone to length, we can see on the second cone fit radiograph that that fits nicely. So we know the apical diameter of the mesial buccal is 40, not 35. And then we've got our final irrigant protocol. We are going to um, use our uh, ultrasonic tip to ultrasonically activate the irrigant we're using sodium hypochlorite you'll notice here that I'm not doing a final ir um, ir irrigation with EDTA because I use HEDP which is a mild chelator which is mixed within the bleach and is used throughout the canal treatment and then you know it's all just simple stuff now we're going to just dry the canals with paper points and then we are going to obturate with uh, our bioceramic. This is one fill and our GP points. So the great thing about joining canals, and I've, I've, I've probably mentioned this before, is that well, I suppose one of the risks with directly syringing um, a bioceramic into the canal space is you can get taper lock. And essentially that's where the, they get a, like, like an airlock within the canal space and the GP kind of bobs up and down. And the great thing about two joining canals is there's kind of like a bit of a vent here um, for the mesolingual canal through the meso middle mesial. And you can see here that the um, the bioceramic is uh, sort of venting into that middle mesial canal. And that's another confirmation that these two canals join. Um, what I would say is you've got to be super careful when you are burning off the excess here. Because I feel like sometimes if you... Um, if you have used loads and loads of uh, sealer and then you... Uh, used heat to remove the excess GP sometimes that sealer goes a little bit funny or clay like and it can drop down on the canal and it can cause a blockage etc 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 so it's a bit of a pain in the in the backside shall we say so we're just going to use this heated plug here just to remove the excess and you know it's really really common here to pull the GP point out with uh, uh, the, the the excess and you kind of use like an incisal kind of um, uh, technique to remove the, uh, the, the the excess GP and I'm just using the Mach 2 plugger here just a really really hard condensing again say it once say a thousand times I like to push nice and nice and nice and hard on these uh, GP points and I suppose in a way, it's the same protocol for the rest of the teeth. What I have done recently, and someone commented um, in uh, one of my other videos, is when they put the bioceramic down here and they directly syringe it, they like to push like a, a size 10K file to sort of um, open up uh, the, the, the sort of uh, like a space for, the, for it to flow and it, and it stops tape lock. And I have been doing that, it looks, looks pretty good. So our, our next challenge here is, is the, the distal. This is a humongous canal. And the great thing about bioceramic is you can fill this canal almost to the brim with bioceramic and it's gonna fill all those little nooks and crannies. But what I have noticed is, is if I fill the bioceramic um, in these huge wide canals and you only use one GP point, I 
um, I sometimes find voids. So there's nothing wrong with a few accessory points. And, and I was asked by another dentist about using accessory points. And I, and I think it's, it's, it's worth it. You know, how much GP points are nothing at all. And, and even like this last one here only goes in a little bit. I think it really, really helps with the obturation process. And again, here's the problem with pulling the GP points out. You want to kind of use this incisive kind of cutting motion just to cut the GP points across. If you were to push down on that and then pull out it's going to pull a gp point with it and then that is what the uh, the the uh, mac 2 pull the pluggers here are for these are used to push down nicely and you know that's it you know when we look at the uh the x-ray here it looks just really really nice you know it's well condensed it's it's everything's to length and um yeah I'm just super, super happy. I suppose in a way what I'm not happy about is I always like to see a middle mesial obturation on, the, on our post-op, but it doesn't always happen. And it doesn't really matter because um, what what you like to see on the x-rays is, 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 is irrelevant, really. What's important is you do a really, really nice job. So that's it. Another case, another Friday. I'll see you next Friday. As of all my videos, any questions... Any criticisms, if you do something different, type it down below. You know, I've had so many great tips from uh, a lot of our viewers where they say, oh, I do this, and I've and me personally, I think, start to do it, and I think, oh, that's a really good um, way of doing things. And, and to me, it's always about doing a nice job and becoming more and more efficient. And so any tips that you have that makes me more efficient in my root canals, it's it's more than welcome and don't forget there are people that here that might not be as good as you on with the root canal and it's nice to give them a little bit of feedback so have a nice day and i shall see you next week bye bye